the culture here on I-24 News. I'm Abib Grober. Thank you for joining me. Today we dedicate our show to the Toronto Film Festival taking place these days. We'll see an overview of the festival's history and hear about this year's slate of films. And we'll have an in-depth interview with director Yuval Del Shad, who's screening his film Baba June at the festival. In its uh, four decades of existence, the Toronto International Film Festival has gained a reputation reaching beyond the glitz and glam and uh, awards buzz. The festival is held each September in Canada, and this year it's scheduled to last from September 10th till the 20th. Daniel Campos takes a look now at the history of the festival and what makes it unique. Founded in 1976 as the Festival of Festivals by Bill Marshall, Hank van der Kolk and Dusty Kolk, the Toronto International Film Festival had the beginning goal of collecting the best films from other film festivals around the world and showing them to enthusiastic audiences in Toronto. In its early days, the festival hosted 35,000 enthusiasts and 127 films from 30 countries. By 2012, those numbers had increased to at least 400,000 spectators and the screening of 372 films from 72 countries. Despite its great success, TIFF remains unique, especially due to its non-competitive approach, lacking of a jury, and where best film or best actress categories don't exist. For industry professionals and attendees, the festival is also relatively inexpensive in costs compared to the important European festivals. The major prize at the festival is the People's Choice Award, given to a future-length film with the highest rating as voted by the going public. And it is precisely here where TIFF's reputation for generating Oscar buzz comes from, demonstrating that the festival is capable of launching a film into the Hollywood elite, as it did with the 1981 epic picture Chariots of Fire, or in 1987 was the fantasy film, The Princess Bride. American Beauty in 1999, 2010, The King's Speech, Silver Linings Playbook in 2012, and in 2013 was 12 Years a Slave. This year, Israel will be a major cultural player at the festival where 11 of the country's productions, including two short films and two documentaries, will premiere. Among the festival's most anticipated titles are director Amos Gitai's Ravin and Natalie Portman's A Tale of Love and Darkness and Baba June, the first Persian language film ever made in Israel from director Yuval Delshad. Three films co-produced in Palestine will also premiere at the festival. The most buzzworthy so far seems to be The Idol, a biopic about Mohammed Asaf, a wedding singer from Gaza who became a regional icon after winning Arab Idol. Based on a true story, the drama comes from Hani Abu Asad, director of the Oscar-nominated film Omar and Paradise Now. But the main focus for cinephiles at TIFF is, of course, finding the upcoming Oscar Awards season contenders. And after September the 20th, we will have a clearer forecast and predictions. Thank you to the Academy. Baba June is a new Israeli film that tells the story of a Persian family living in Israel in the mid-20th century. It is the first Farsi-speaking film made in Israel starring Iranian-born actors, including Navid Negahban as the family patriarch. The film will screen this weekend at the Toronto Film Festival, and I'm very happy to have the film's director, Yuval Delshad, here in the studio to talk about it. Thanks for coming in, Yuval. Thank you very much. So tell me a little bit about the film about the story, what, what's going on there? The story is about a father who has a turkey uh, farm. Mm -hmm. And he has just one uh, boy, 13 years old. Uh, and he decided that uh, he's going to take his place in the farm and he started to teach him the, the work. And mm -hmm. For him, it's obvious, like he was a child and his father... Took over his father. So yeah. we think it's obvious. Uh, but then he see that his son uh, don't want it. Not so keen on the idea. Yeah, and it starts, uh, this conflict starts very slowly. Um, uh, but the boy is stubborn. Um, and it's Just uh, like his father, I guess? Yeah. But he take it one step ahead. Okay. 
Um, now, you started off as a documentary filmmaker, right? Yes. And you made the, the switch to, to uh, uh, fiction. How, how did that happen? Why did that happen? Uh, I've met uh, several of, uh, documentary, but uh, um, in the last 10 years, uh, when the, all this media revolution came and people start to be uh, aware to mm -hmm. the camera and aware to how, how they go, yeah, yeah, they can, uh, they can edit, they know exactly, so they know exactly when you shoot them, when you ask questions, they know exactly what they want you to know, not the truth. Yeah, and I go. Uh, um, I I I start documentary because it's true about life. Yeah, uh, and then so you I felt that that truth was disappearing. Disappearing, yeah. Okay. And people pretend. And true. what? And in in with fiction, with with feature films, you can you can bring more truth. No, but uh, this telling a big lie I to see. tell a huge uh, truth. Uh huh. So. For sure, when somebody sit and see the film, for sure it's not documentary. Yeah. But if I will make it so accurate, and the emotion will be so accurate, and the character will be uh, moving and touching and and right, uh, you sit in the cinema, uh, you look at the screen, and you forgot uh, that it's not a real. Because if somebody sit and cry, why you cry? It's just an <laughs> it's act, just a actor. story. It's just a story. Yeah. It's just screening. Uh, so, but there uh, is tr a truth in it. Yeah, and yeah. this true. From the documentary, I bring here nice. when I work with the with the actors. A lot of scene here, um, uh, like you see here, a couple of them were just uh, improvised oh. a little bit, were just uh, before the action or after the action. Uh, nice. So I, I I play with that with my uh, uh, documentary skill. Yeah to tell uh, this to true tell story. story. Now, uh, um, this isn't an autobiographical uh, film, but you did bring a lot of your own experiences. I mean, you grew up to a Persian uh, family, I don't know, maybe in the Turkey business, maybe not. Not Turkey, we have uh, peaches. Uh, okay, not peaches. Uh, but, so, but you did bring a lot of your own experiences, yeah. I, I assume. Uh, a lot of sin that you see here well, uh, was, was happened in the past, mm -hmm. but not to me, all of them. Mm. To the environment around me, to my uncle, to my... Uh, to my friends around mm -hmm. me, because I live in Moshav like this, where all the people there was from Iran, uh, exactly like in, in this film. But this boy, his wish, his, his dream, is like my dream, my wish. To make films. Yes, yeah. so uh, I took part of an event that's happened, and I uh, managed them together to, to tell uh, this story I want. Yeah. Now, the, the film's in, uh, at least partially in Farsi, which you understand, but you don't really speak Farsi, right? Yeah, I speak Farsi very bad. Okay. <laughs> I understand a little. Okay. Uh, so, it was... so how does that work? How do you direct a, a film? Did you have a, 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 a translator on, on set? We had, a, we had Persian translator uh, to translate me uh, if they improvise something, because mm -hmm. I, un I understand what I write. I write it in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. We translate it to uh, English and translate from it to from to Farsi. And if they improvise and I want them to improvise, I you need, need to, to know. You need to what they said. So a translator translate me after every cut, what's happened. But Navid, who is, uh, can speak English, cannot speak with the boy because the boy is not understand Farsi and not understand English. So I need to work with Navid and with the boy differently, but I need also to connect them together yeah. uh, and to, to be the translate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this this was the the hard work uh, yeah. because the boy was sitting, you know, in the car and the driving, and the father uh, uh, tell his line, but the boy it seems that he is understand, but he's not understand. So yeah. what I did, I just caught him. Uh, I took uh, one word from the old sentence, mm -hmm. one word mm -hmm. like the essence of the of the of the line mm -hmm. and i'll tell him if you're gonna hear um, 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 you hear this sound you the sound you will you know react you react like yeah. he want to take you yeah yeah so he wait to so every line he does not need to understand all the fallacy but he need to understand just one word like to, to, to know the emotion yeah like yeah. Hune, yeah. Hune, it's it's home Okay. So yeah. So if he ask him in Farsi uh, why you don't want to come home, when he hear, blah 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 blah, he understand this line is why I don't want to come home. I got it.
Uh, speaking of, of the actors, you, Navid, uh, known mostly for, for uh, his work in Homeland, uh, how did that connection come about? Uh, when I finished to write the script, I try, uh, start to find uh, actors from Israel. Mm -hmm. But I didn't find uh, actors who will be good and know uh, to speak Farsi. Not just for the film, yeah. but, but to really live, speak. live this yeah. culture yeah. and understand yeah. this culture. When I'm going to tell him, your father is here, he will understand. Yeah what you need to do. And once you met him, it was an obvious choice? It was a uh, click like, like this. Uh, we did a Skype uh, audition. Yeah. Uh, and it was t it would take, uh, we had a long conversation and uh, Navid, really, I feel him that he's, he know, he know this life from his childhood. Um, and then I understood, you know, this film has a DNA of a family cell. Mm -hmm of relationship, the essence of the relationship, and of course of a Persian family. So, so yeah. I see that Navid understand all the story. Yeah, it is the, the, the as you said, it's, it's a, a family drama, but there's also the, the, the Persian culture that, that plays a role. And that's been an issue in Israel, not just with Persian culture, but different cultures of, of different people that came to Israel. Do you have a, a, a anger or do you have a criticism that you're trying to convey about how different cultures were accepted in Israel at the time? Uh, my point of view is a little different because um, me as an, as an artist, as a director, um, I don't want to say, um, look, I want to criticize something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when people came here, it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the early of uh, Israel, came from Iran, Morocco, and all of this country, they came here, uh, they feel afraid, they feel they have no, I, uh, um, there's, the place is, is not home. Yeah. So they gathered together, yeah. and the government put them in a, in a group. Mm -hmm. So when, until today, all, after all these years, when you go to south of Israel, you will see, um, um, a village of Iranian, a village of um, Moroccan. Moroccan, right, right. Uh, until today, they, they choose they to still live. live like, yeah. So I think, you know, sometimes uh, there is a situation that happened. Um, I don't want to criticize, but, I, but if you're going to look in this film deeply, you can feel and understand uh, this situation that mm. uh, was there and understand uh, um, what I want to tell. Yeah. Because the... Um, uh, after all, he's telling the story of a boy that born here and want to live his own life. And his father, nobody here is bad or do something bad. His father, yeah. he don't know. He uh, means well. Yeah, he yeah. don't know different way of, yeah. uh, of, of uh, 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 treat his boy. Yeah. Because his father is on his back always. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it looks like a, like a very interesting uh, story and a very interesting project. You know, while this isn't political, it's not a political film at all, you can't take the political out of uh, pretty much anything in Israel, especially if you put Iran in there as well. Um, do you hope that maybe the film will be seen in Iran by Iranians and that might bring some sort of change to, to the way things are at the yeah, moment? Yeah, yeah. This thing uh, I wish to, I wish it to be. I know that I Iran, uh, uh, um, uh, by the law of Iran, uh, they don't allow uh, artists who are from Israel uh, to show their artists mm -hmm. in, uh, in mm -hmm. uh, Iran. Uh, and for, for sure it will not be official yeah. that the film will be screened there. But... Um, it will get there, I think, uh, you know. In the age of the internet. It will get illegal there. Illegal, you're not going to see any money out of it, but at least some people may Yeah, might because, see. you know, now uh, on Facebook, I have a lot of people from Iran, uh, not uh, Jewish, uh -huh. Iranian Muslim, mm -hmm. that contact me, talk with me uh, about the film. They ask the big question that I always uh, uh, they, they ask me is, how can the government in Israel let you shot in Israel film with in Farsi? That is the, the language of the enemy. So uh, we've talked a lot of, about that. I think all so this there's, talking. There's already dialogue yeah, happening. Yeah, all this dialogue, you yeah. know, small dialogue between. We have thousands of comments, mm -hmm. people uh, comments to that, uh, to that trailer. 
So I think, you know, um, conversation between people is start already. Can't uh, uh, ask for much more than that. Maybe uh, some success in uh, Toronto in the upcoming screening. Uh, best okay. of luck there, Yuval. And uh, once again, thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thank you very much. That's uh, it from us for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed our show. If you happen to be in Toronto, enjoy the festival. And uh, wherever you are, please join us again next week. We'll leave you with a few images from the trailer of the festival's opening film, Demolition, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Chris Cooper. Here it is. Dear Champion Vending Company, this letter is in regards to Vending Machine 714 located in St. Andre's Hospital, which should have given me peanut M&Ms. Regrettably, it didn't. The machine over there? My candy's stuck. It happens sometimes. I found this upsetting as I was very hungry, and also my wife had died 10 minutes earlier. Whoa, whoa, whoa!